Welcome to our Hong Kong Brief program. Today, we dive into some intriguing stories shaping our city. First up, we explore how elderly individuals from Hong Kong's ethnic minorities are overcoming language barriers and emotional hurdles through an expressive arts therapy program. This initiative has become a vital outlet for creativity and connection, helping participants express their feelings in ways they never thought possible. Next, we bring you a somber report from Waterfall Bay Park, where a woman in her 20s was tragically found dead in a pond. Emergency services are currently investigating the circumstances surrounding this incident, and our thoughts go out to her family and friends during this difficult time. Finally, we take a look at the fluctuating landscape of Hong Kong's stock market, as investors weigh the potential for fiscal stimulus against disappointing industrial profits. With the Hang Seng Index showing mixed results, the anticipation of upcoming discussions at China's National People's Congress adds to the market's uncertainty. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage on these stories. South China Morning Post highlights the inspiring journey of elderly individuals from Hong Kong's ethnic minority communities, particularly focusing on Ash Maya Limbu, a 72-year-old housewife from Nepal. After facing significant challenges due to language barriers and cultural differences since her arrival in 2014, Limbo found solace and expression through an arts therapy program initiated by the Hong Kong Expressive Arts Therapy Service Center. This initiative, which includes activities like clay art, drumming, and painting, aims to provide emotional relief and mental health support to around 300 elderly participants, most of whom are Nepali. The program encourages participants to explore their feelings about life and death, fostering a sense of community and emotional expression that transcends language limitations. In a tragic incident reported by South China Morning Post, a woman in her 20s was discovered dead in a pond at Waterfall Bay Park in Aberdeen, Hong Kong. Emergency services responded promptly to the scene after receiving a report early in the morning. Upon arrival, they retrieved the woman from the water, but she was pronounced dead at the scene. Investigations are currently underway to determine the circumstances surrounding her death, with personal items, including her octopus card and keys, found nearby, raising questions about her identity and the events leading to this unfortunate incident. The South China Morning Post also provides an overview of the fluctuating performance of Hong Kong stocks as investors grapple with the potential for fiscal stimulus from China amidst disappointing industrial profits. The Hang Seng Index experienced slight gains, while the Hang Seng Tech Index also rose. However, the market remains cautious due to a significant drop in industrial profits, which fell by 27% year-on-year in September. The upcoming meeting of China's National People's Congress is anticipated to address financial strategies, including potential adjustments to bond issuance and deficit management, as investors remain alert to the economic landscape amid mixed signals from the market and broader Asian indices. South China Morning Post reports that China's market regulator has imposed a fine of 6 million yuan, approximately 841,000 U.S. dollars, on China International Capital Corporation, CICC, a prominent investment bank, for its inadequate due diligence during the sponsorship of S2C, a local chip company, in its failed IPO attempt in 2021. The China Securities Regulatory Commission, CSRC, not only confiscated 2 million yuan from six sponsorship income but also penalized two executives with fines of 1.5 million yuan each for their roles in the misrepresentation of financial documents. CICC acknowledged the penalties and expressed its commitment to improving its practices, emphasizing its role as a gatekeeper in the capital market. The scrutiny on IPOs has intensified since the appointment of Wu Qing as the head of the CSRC, who aims to eliminate unqualified companies and restore investor confidence. S2C's IPO application was withdrawn after the CSRC found evidence of financial falsification, leading to further penalties against the company. In another report from South China Morning Post, Russia's consul general in Hong Kong, 
Anatoly Kargapilov, shared the country's intention to enhance cultural exchanges with Hong Kong by showcasing its rich arts heritage. Following the Ukraine war, Russia is shifting its focus from Europe to Asia, and Kargapilov indicated that leading Russian museums are eager to collaborate with Hong Kong institutions like M Plus and the Hong Kong Museum of Art. The Bolshoi Theatre, famous for its ballet and opera, could also host performances in Hong Kong. The cultural boycott resulting from the conflict has led to a decrease in Russian performances abroad, prompting Moscow to seek new partnerships in Asia. Kargapilov noted a growing interest in Russian films in Hong Kong and is organizing screenings to foster cultural ties. He also mentioned the potential for increased direct flights between Hong Kong and Russian cities, reflecting a post-pandemic rebound in tourism. City is revolutionizing wealth management and institutional banking through innovative digital solutions, as highlighted by South China Morning Post. Avalini San, CEO of City Hong Kong and Macau, explained that fintech partnerships are central to enhancing client experiences. City Ventures has invested in a diverse portfolio of 115 fintech startups, focusing on areas such as AI and digital assets. A notable example is the Wealth360 management tool, which provides clients with insights into their financial activities across multiple banks. City has also made substantial investments in technology, with over 12 billion US dollars allocated last year to improve digital banking capabilities for institutional clients. Innovations like City Token Services leverage blockchain technology to enable real-time transactions, while the rapid adoption of digital services has seen 90% of consumer banking customers actively using City's platforms. San emphasized the importance of upskilling employees in both technical and interpersonal skills to adapt to the evolving landscape of finance, particularly with the rise of AI technologies. South China Morning Post reports that Hermes has once again embraced its equestrian heritage with a stunning homeware collection unveiled at Milan Design Week 2024. This collection, which spans furniture, tableware, and lighting, showcases the brand's commitment to craftsmanship and artistry that has defined its legacy for over a century. The juxtaposition of new and heritage pieces creates a dialogue between tradition and innovation, with earth-inspired materials like brick, stone, and wood playing a key role. Notable items include luxurious cashmere bedspreads and the innovative diapason D. Hermes lounge chair, exemplifying the brand's unique savoir faire. The collection culminates in the Tressage Equester's dinner service, which beautifully reflects the bond between horse and rider through its intricate designs and vibrant color palette. In a different vein, Louis Vuitton has unveiled its latest fine jewelry collection featuring the monogram star diamond, a dazzling reinterpretation of its iconic emblem. Originally designed by Georges Vuitton in 1896 as a signature against forgery, the new diamond cut features 53 facets that bring the monogram star to life in a revolutionary way. Artistic director Francesca Amphitheatroff has crafted a collection that seamlessly blends the brand's rich heritage with modern elegance, showcasing pieces that include rings, earrings, and pendants. Each item reflects meticulous craftsmanship and thoughtful design, with an emphasis on responsible sourcing. The introduction of the LV Diamond Certificate, which tracks the diamond's journey from extraction to final form, further enhances the luxury experience while ensuring transparency for discerning collectors. The South China Morning Post also highlights the challenges Hong Kong faces with its aging population and the government's ongoing struggle to address this issue effectively. While the chief executive has acknowledged the potential of the silver economy to create new business opportunities, concrete actions have been slow to materialize. The government has encouraged seniors to retire in mainland China, suggesting it as a solution to the space constraints in Hong Kong. However, this approach raises concerns about the support and familial connections seniors may lose. 
as other countries have successfully adapted their policies to cater to an aging population, Hong Kong seems to lag behind, with only a few meetings held by the newly established Advisory Panel on Silver Economy. The need for a coherent strategy that prioritizes the well-being of seniors while also tapping into their consumer potential is more pressing than ever, as the city grapples with the realities of an aging society. South China Morning Post reports on the efforts of Comhome Social Realty, a pioneering social enterprise in Hong Kong that assists families in finding better living conditions in subdivided flats. Sherry Dang, a 34-year-old single mother, shared her relief after relocating from a cramped 70-square-foot apartment to a more spacious 130-square-foot unit in Suen Wan, facilitated by Comhome. The organization not only helped her avoid hefty commission fees, but also arranged a cost-effective moving service. Comhome has successfully aided 17 families in improving their housing situations, while also advocating for government measures to enhance the quality of subdivided flats across the city. With approximately 110,000 such units in Hong Kong, many of which are substandard, the enterprise calls for owner incentives to meet new housing regulations aimed at ensuring safety and livability. The Prudential Hong Kong Tennis Open, as highlighted by South China Morning Post, has made significant strides in its organization and facilities since its inception. WTA supervisor Claire Wood expressed her admiration for the improvements made since her last oversight, noting enhanced player amenities and a more premium public experience at Victoria Park. The tournament, now classified as a WTA 250 event, has a rich history and has evolved to attract higher-profile players. Wood emphasized the importance of potentially establishing permanent structures to further elevate the tournament's status, while also praising the appointment of Li Na as tournament director, which she believes positively impacts player relations and scheduling. In an exclusive interview with South China Morning Post, Russian Consul General Anatoly Kargapilov discussed the potential for expanding trade between Russia and Hong Kong amid growing ties between Moscow and Beijing. Despite challenges posed by Western sanctions, Kargapilov noted that trade between Russia and Hong Kong surged to $5.8 billion last year, highlighting the city's role as a key financial hub. He called for Hong Kong to host economic forums with former Soviet states to bolster collaboration, particularly in sectors like agriculture and technology. Kargapilov also praised Hong Kong's unique advantages within the Greater Bay Area, emphasizing its potential as a research and development center, while expressing his appreciation for the city's vibrant infrastructure and local cuisine. South China Morning Post reports that the Hong Kong Science and Technology Parks Corporation, HKSTP, is leading its largest overseas delegation to Saudi Arabia, comprising 25 innovative startups. This significant initiative aims to showcase Hong Kong's technological prowess at the Future Investment Initiative Forum in Riyadh. CEO Albert Wong emphasized the growing demand in the Middle East for green technologies and biotechnology, aligning with Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 to diversify its economy. Among the participants is Christine Yip, whose biotechnology firm offers a non-invasive diabetes monitoring device, and Ko Wong Sheng, who seeks to promote electric planes in the region. The event will also feature prominent Hong Kong executives discussing various investment opportunities, including the launch of the first Hong Kong ETF on the Saudi Stock Exchange. Australian Broadcasting Corporation highlights the enchanting narrative of Us and the Night, a debut film by Audrey Lam that transforms a mundane university library into a whimsical playground for two young women. The film captures the essence of friendship and imagination as the protagonists, Xiao and Umi, navigate their nightly library duties while exploring the boundless worlds within books. Lam's personal connection to libraries, stemming from her own experiences, infuses the film with a nostalgic and dreamlike quality. Shot on 16mm film, it eschews traditional storytelling for a more abstract, 
memory-driven approach, reflecting the playful spirit of its characters. The film serves as a tribute to the magic of libraries and the fleeting nature of physical media, making it a poignant exploration of youth and creativity. South China Morning Post also details how Chinese stocks have regained investor interest after a significant market rally, with Goldman Sachs King Gerlau noting a resurgence in optimism following a surprise stimulus package from Beijing. Over a recent five-day marketing trip, Lao conducted 35 meetings with investors, indicating a renewed focus on Chinese equities. The market has seen a substantial increase in value, with foreign funds investing nearly $11 billion since late September. Despite ongoing caution, Lao believes the commitment from Chinese policymakers to support economic growth is strong, suggesting potential for further market upside. As Hong Kong prepares to host a major financial summit, the atmosphere is shifting from pessimism to a more positive outlook on investment opportunities in the region. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. Voices loud, headlines flashing wild. Broke in a frame and now, stories told, it's time to bow. Eyes through the truth pursued, understanding woven through. Heartbeats race breaking through, knowledge spreads the new view. Breaking the news, breaking the day, truth and insight. Breaking the news, breaking the day, truth and insight our way. Every story, every play, living clear we convey.
Losing focus, black and white. Every angle sheds some light. Morning, evening, through the night.